The two greatest obstacles in man's own life is man's own mind and man's own mortality. We know through the ancient studies of the East, especially in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, that it is believed man's suffering comes from the fact that man confuses his mortal body for his immortal soul. And even though this philosophy is really still only taught in yoga schools and martial arts schools, it was a philosophy and a theory that ruled antiquity. Many can say that this philosophy and this theory is what ignited theater, arts, government, policies. But then, of course, as we know, an era came around where man started to submitting to an idea, a theology, that their soul and their self-worth was judged by something outside of themselves. And with this sort of control, a lot of these ancient philosophies and these ancient theories that gave us so much life and so much beauty went underground. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Every time you like the video or you leave a comment or subscribe to the channel, you are helping me get this information out. And once this information starts to circulate and get out, we can have deeper conversations about how to course correct the mess that humanity has gotten itself in. And of course, this channel would not be possible without our patrons and our producers. Without you guys, this work simply would not exist. I thank you guys so, 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 so much from the bottom of my heart. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are going to be talking about the Ulysian Mysteries. Now, a few things before we get started into this deep dive. As always, I am going to call in Michael and Gabriel and all the beings of the highest light and highest good to be here to protect this information, to help keep the recording intact, the filming intact. And I ask that you help me say the right things that need to be said in order to get this message out there to the greater whole. I also want to comment that even though this video is being released on Friday, January 6th, I am actually filming this video video on Monday, December 26th. I hope that you guys all had an incredible Christmas. I am a little bit hungover this morning, but that's okay. I had a lot of fun with my family. As many of you know, I am going to be traveling, doing a quite a bit of traveling for a pretty substantial period of time in the coming new year. So I wanted to go ahead and get a couple of weeks worth of content done um, for many reasons. One, so that it was less stress for me to during travel periods to get my stuff up. And two, I know that I'm going to be giving some I know that I'm going to be given some assigned topics pretty soon. And so I wanted to go ahead and get this stuff out there, stuff that I find near and dear to my heart. Now, because this is being filmed on December 26th and aired on January 6th, if you became a patron or a producer in the middle of that time period, that is why your name was not on the credits. Don't worry. Your name will be appearing on the credits very, very soon. And of course, y y all of you guys who support the, ch the channel, whether through your donations each month or by sharing these videos, you guys mean the world to me. You know that I'm heavily, heavily, heavily shadow banned on my channel. And so thank you guys so much for being here and helping me get this research out there. Even though I'm the one that does a lot of this research, I don't consider it to be my research because I feel like this is just a point in our timeline where we all need to be pulling up these interesting topics and looking a little bit deeper at them and seeing where maybe we have gone wrong or where maybe we have been led astray. So I thank you guys for participating in this with me. As I've said, as Ram da Das has said, we are all just walking each other home. So you guys are truly the rock stars and the spirit behind this channel. And I am so appreciative of you. All right. So let's get into the topic at hand. Now, we have seen the Ulyssian Mysteries mentioned a lot in our Sophia and our Magdalene uh, deep dives, right? Through the books that we've been reading and trying to understand the true story of Magdalene and Yahshua ben Yosef, or as many people call him Jesus, although... 
that was not his name. Um, we, we're seeing these references to all these mystery schools. And, and to be honest with you guys, I was just going to do another big deep dive into the mystery of, of ISIS, the mystery schools that surround the priest and priesthood of ISIS. However, in doing that research, I realized there were a couple of, of mystery schools that kind of predated the ISIS mystery school and kind of ran con conjuncture with them and a some of the, the members of the ISIS priesthood were also a part of other mystery schools as well. They all kind of work together. And so I thought we kind of need to break this up into different different storylines. And so we're going to be talking about the, the Ulyssian mysteries today building up to understanding the mysteries of isis now this is very 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 fascinating um i just truly loved researching the ulyssian mysteries uh, because there was a lot of similarities i saw in this particular ritual and in some of the rituals we see today again in the yoga world and in maybe the martial arts world we also see the same type of rituals coming through things like dieta which is an ayahuasca ritual or a peyote ritual and we'll get into that a little bit later we know that there are theories that the tree of life that is spoken about in um the bible as well as other sacred texts has on, on some accounts been thought to be understood the psychedelic mushroom and you guys know i'm a huge fan of microdosing and so just so you're aware, in, in some of these old mystery schools, the use of psychedelics was very, very prominent. And I personally do not have a problem with this at all. As many of you guys know, if you've been on this channel for a while, we know that everything is inverted. We know that the, the original word for sorcery that we see in the Bible, that Greek word was pharmakia. And and it doesn't take a genius rocket science to figure out what pharmakia is. And so when we look at things like ayahuasca, peyote, mushrooms, we're looking at something that the uh, marijuana, we're looking at st something that the earth actually provides, that, that God and God's infinite wisdom created for mankind. We know that our lives, or if you're on any type of a spiritual journey, you know your life is more than just waking up and going to bed, going to work, working out, putting makeup on, taking a shower. These are just activities done in, in the whole picture of what this journey really is about. And this, this journey of life is about the soul knowing itself. And so on this journey, I do believe that God, and us all being fractals of God, gave us help, gave us assistance through these things of psychedelics. Now, with that being said, most psychedelics are not, from my understanding, are not addictive. I know I have not ever experienced anything like that with any type of psychedelics. In fact, when I do go through phases of microdosing, I often have to set a, a, an alarm on my phone to remind me to take my, my medicine each morning. And, even, and in saying they're not addictive, this also there's also this idea that, and Ram Dass talks about this as well in a lot of his books, that we use the psychedelics for one purpose, to help expand the mind, to help work through limitations that the mind has, that the mind doesn't actually know it has, so we can open up other doors of possibility and, and doors of thought and doors of understanding. But eventually they do have to be put down and put aside so that we can now continue the journey without the assistance. Now, as many people who have experienced these ritualized um, ayahuasca or peyote or even, even um, full-on having a full-on serving of mushrooms knows that when you are full-on in these in these experiences there's really nothing you can do right it's not like you can go to work and and, and go about your day microdosing yes you can because there's not enough to make you kind of zone out of the world you're in it's just enough to relax the mind but when you're full-on in these experiences you have to do it in a very controlled way you can't you can't be just out there for shits and giggles doing this stuff because you're not going to be able to function in your normal matrix life they, they should be used very sacredly and very ritualistically now with things like ayahuasca and peyote especially if you go and do something like dieta which is a 10-day experience in peru and the amazon you do have have shaman with you you do have a leader with you who is is very much like a healer a doctor who is monitoring you during this experience if it's a big group doing it together you will have the shaman in the room doing the sound healing which we'll talk about 
with this mystery school as well, because this also existed with them too, but also making sure that the right vibrations are coming into the space that's being used so that each participant has the experience that he or she needs to have. Now, on top of that, each participant also has a babysitter, has somebody sitting with each person, somebody that is completely sober, that is experienced enough with the medicine, as they call it, the plant medicine, to be able to help the person who is going through the procedure, we'll call it, not freak out or if they need to go throw up because that happens a lot, or they can help them make sure that they are completely safe. They also are there in case the ritual for the person gets extremely dark to the point where the person looks like they can't handle it anymore they can call the shaman over to come and change the vibrational frequency so that there's a shift for the participant so with that being said i, I want people to understand especially if you're not familiar with these types of um, experiences that there are a lot of rules there's a lot of integrity with this and it's not something it's not like smoking cigarettes or like any other type of like drug where you can kind of go out and start like alcohol where you can still kind of function in society and, and sometimes i think being able to function in society with is what makes the addiction the worst these other things you literally cannot do and your it has to be used specifically for a ritualistic experience things like ayahuasca as i said a lot of people have kind of a bumpy ride with it because a lot of their own ego death a lot of their own fears start to come up it's not a party drug it's not something you're going to do to go and have like a rip war in time at a concert so i want people to really understand that and of course do your own research go out there and look this up for yourself and understand it for yourself there's a lot of information out there about this so again we are seeing remnants of these old mystery schools throughout our society today again with these ceremonies with traditional yoga not western yoga but with the traditional yoga with things like martial arts you do have to be quite disciplined and in these mystery schools there was a level of discipline this is definitely not a system where everybody gets a participation trophy this is definitely not a system where there is a quote-unquote safe space this is a system a process that's going to bring you to your knees as i've said through my 16-year journey in traditional yoga a lot of this time has been very very hard because what you're doing is you're going up against yourself now these mystery schools were not run like cults are today yes they had priest and priestess or shaman they had people there that were responsible for initiating the initiates in the ritual but because this is such a personal experience for the individual, just like the ayahuasca ceremonies today, each individual had their own experience. And no one was there trying to tell the initiate whether their experience was wrong or was right, because each and every one of us is in a battle against ourselves. Now, the Ulysian Mysteries were, again, an initiation process that happened every year based off of the story of Demeter and Persephone. Now, it's important to note that many people believe that these mysteries, these rituals predate Greek civilization as we know it. It's also extremely important to note that these Ulyssian mysteries were run by women, high priestess of these mystery schools. So just a little bit of a backstory with the story of Demeter and Persephone. Demeter is the goddess of agriculture and fertility. Persephone is Demeter's daughter. Persephone was assigned the task of painting all the earth's flowers. But before she was done, Hades, the god of the underworld, abducted her and took her captive. Demeter, of course, being the ever-loving mother, was distraught over her missing child. And so she went to Zeus and, and basically pleaded with Zeus to help her get her daughter Persephone back from Hades, back from the underworld. Zeus finally relented and agreed to help Demeter get her daughter back when Demeter caused a huge drought to come across all the lands. Once the drought happens, the civilization, the people of the world petitioned in Demeter's favor to get Zeus to assist her in getting her daughter back. Now, there was a rule with Hades, the god of the underworld, that if you were brought to the underworld with Hades, you couldn't eat or drink anything. 
If you were to eat or drink something, you would be destined to have to return back to the underworld. Now, Hermes, who is also Thoth, who we also know through our study of, of the Emerald Tablet, most likely was the son of Zeus, who wasn't necessarily a god, but an Anunnaki. Well, Hermes, or Thoth, was sent down to the underworld to retrieve Persephone. But before he was able to do that, Hades tricked Persephone into eating four to six pomegranate seeds. Now, they say four to six, and you'll see why, because we're not exactly sure. And depending on where in the world you live will determine what the number of pomegranate seeds were actually eaten. But because she ate these pomegranate pomegranate seeds she now was destined to return to the underworld every single year for four to six months out of the year you see where i'm going with this well once she was able to come back to her mother demeter demeter was so excited that she made the world flourish again in flowers and greenery in in, in produce and harvest but then many months later when Persephone would have to return back to the underworld for four to six months, Demeter would go into hiding again. Coldness would come over the land. You understand? So when Persephone has to go back into the underworld, that's the start of our winter, our fall. Our winter then goes into spring when Persephone is then returned back to her mother, the goddess of fertility and agriculture, when everything is brought back and all the wrongs are righted and everything is flourishing and new life is appearing again. And hopefully as we get into the rituals of the mystery schools, you'll see why this story of descent and ascend were so important to the mystery schools. Now it is argued that the Elysian mystery schools were the most famous mystery schools in all of the ancient world now the ulyssian mystery schools get their name even though their whole setup their whole gig is based on the story of demeanor and persephone they get their names because the temple the main temple where all of the rituals happened was in a town called ulysses which is still a city in greece today now yes um I don't think that this is the actual location. I don't think any of the locations they tell us are accurate. Um, if you're new to this channel, that's a long story as to why I don't think that. Just a hint is to start studying Tartaria, then you'll see why I don't think that. But just know that that this is where they report that the, these things happen. I do think they happen in a town called Ulysses, but I don't think that it was in the location it is today. Ulysses is 14 miles northwest of Athens. Now, as I said earlier, these mystery schools predate Greek civilization. And at this time, many of the roads in, in towns in, in, a, in, in our world were like goat, goat paths, right? They were probably more akin to what we would call hiking trails. But the Ulyssian mysteries, these rituals that happened every year were so important to the cultural and spiritual personality of the time in the air that the road from Athens to Ulysses was an actual road. And the road itself had a name. It was called the Sacred Way. Now, yes, the mysteries represented the myth of the abduction of Persephone from her mother, Demeter, by the king of the underworld, Hades. And because it was a, de a deep representative of this story, the rituals and the, under un the understanding of ceremony for each individual happened in three phases, which we're going to get into. These phases were the descent, the search, and the ascent. And this happened more or less in the greater mysteries because this these rituals took place in two different sections, the lesser mysteries and the greater mysteries. Now, the participants in both the lesser and greater mysteries were the priestess, the high priestess, the initiates, others who had already done it, had done these rituals, therefore could watch, and ones who had already reached a sense of enlightenment. Now, the ritual started in the spring. So the lesser mysteries was the ritual that started in the springtime, right when Persephone would be returning back to her mother, Demeter. And the lesser mystery seems to be more of like a ceremony educational time. Like th this is when the initiates who are doing the lesser mysteries, they 
they were gearing up and preparing to do the greater mysteries in the fall because you couldn't do the greater mysteries until you had done the lesser mysteries. And you'll see why, because in the lesser mysteries, they were basically learning and having to reenact the story of Demeter and Persephone, the actual story of Persephone being kidnapped by Hades, going underground, Demeter looking for her. And so they had to have a very comprehensive understanding of this story so that when the greater mysteries happened in the fall, they themselves were more prepared for the psychedelic growing of consciousness and understanding of their own soul that was waiting for them. Now, the greater mysteries would start in and about September in the fall time. And all of the people, the initiatives had, who had completed the lesser mysteries in the spring would start their journey in Athens. And they would actually walk the sacred way, the road, the 14 miles northwest to the city of Ulysses. Now, when they were doing this, as they were making this 14 mile walk, a lot of the citizens would stand on the sides of the road and would like insult them, would call out very demeaning things to them. And their job, the initiate's job was to take it in and not react. This was supposed to be the initial phase of destroying the ego. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, if you are, have been on this channel for a while, you probably have a better good idea. Or if you are a, a great lover of philosophy or of Eastern philosophy specifically, or if you have yourself studied the Yoga Sutras, the ego is the false sense of self. The ego is something that is created by the mind in the body to protect and to give the body purpose. Now, in the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali speaks of this in three different characters we have prakriti which is nature nature is anything with a birth life and a death and therefore is constantly changing parusha and purusha is the soul the eternal watcher of the property and ishvara ishvara is god or lord the highest level of consciousness so basically in the yoga sutras patanjali is telling you that man's suffering is because man confuses his identity man thinks that who he is is his ego when his ego isn't real because his ego isn't permanent. It's his ego is the false sense of self. His ego is associated with property, with the nature, with the body, but the soul, the parusha is something that is not the body. For example, my soul is not Bryce. Bryce, my body is the experience of my soul in this lifetime. But Bryce, the property of me, a almost 40 year old woman, will eventually die one day. And because my body will die one day, it's not real. What is real is the soul that runs through the body. We also see this in, in, in things like Shiva and Shakti. Like the Shiva is the soul, the Shakti is the body, the expression of the soul. And once you start to understand this, this is when true liberation starts to happen. Because then you can experience your life the way it was meant to be experienced as a temporary thing, uh, an opportunity for the soul to know itself. We understand that in order to even start questioning these things, one has to suffer. There has to be pain in one's life, obstacles in one's life for one to sit back and go, "What? what's the point of this? Well, the suffering is necessary. It creates the friction to then push us into these deeper understandings. So this is what was happening in the Ulyssian Mysteries. The initiates who were coming to this ritual to have a greater understanding of who they are, who they really are, their first experience in the greater mysteries in the fall was to take abuse, basically, from their neighbors in order to start to dissolve the ego. Once the initiates got to Ulysses, they would stop by a well, a well that it was believed Demeter herself had stopped by in search for her daughter Persephone. Once they got to the well, they were instructed to fast for nine days. Now, fasting is definitely a huge part of spiritual practice. And I know why they had them do this, because they wanted them to clear out their system of all food and all drink. Because after the nine days, they would be so served this like elixir, this like uh, almost like a tea or, or a beer. And this was called a keon. Now there were some herbs for sure in this this drink, but there was also psychedelics in this stream. Uh, this drink, psychedelics that were seemed to kind of perhaps even be along more along the lines of like LSD, but definitely more like ayahuasca and peyote. And of course, again, this was being very much monitored by the high priestess of the Ulyssian mysteries. Now I do want to mention too that this was not a small group of people. If you go to an ayahuasca ceremony today, you're looking at like ten to twenty people. There were about a thousand people per year 
who came through these these initiation rites. Once they had had their psychedelic tea, they were brought down into this underground theater. Now, this was almost like sensory deprivation in some ways. But once they got inside the underground theater, again, there was no light to the outside world. They had candles lit and they would start sound therapy. Now, it is said that once one went through the greater mysteries, they were sworn to secrecy. If they were to tell their secrets, apparently they would get killed. I don't know if I believe that, but they were told not to really speak of it. So this is kind of roughly what we know happened just from some accounts. Very much, again, like an ayahuasca ceremony is today. They would start a process for a few days of, of, of sound therapy. So basically like what we have playing bowls today where people play bowls. And so these people, the initiates, would be under a mind-altering substance. And not, not necessarily mind-altering, more mind-opening substance, where they had to contemplate the story of Persephone and Demeter ascending into the underworld and ascending again while having their mind expanded through these psychedelics and through the healing modality of sound therapy. Again, a lot like what shamans do in dieta to this very day. Now, a lot of these stories we see, even the story we see of, of Jesus being crucified and resurrected, even though I don't believe he was ever crucified, and I have more proof of that now because it, it, it's now believed that what Magdalene and Yahshua were doing was actually reenacting the story of Ishtar and Tammuz, which we'll get into in a later video. So there wasn't actually a crucifixion. But if we look at the crucifixion in the way that Ishtar and Tammuz's crucifixion story was supposed to be told, as well as Demeter and Persephone, we're looking at the fall of man. The fall of man being man falling into, into his own ignorance, not necessarily man falling into sin as we know it. Because remember, the original definition of sin was just to miss the mark, to not understand who you actually are. And so if we're looking at the greater concept of this, the descent Man fell into amnesia. Man, man came to earth. The soul decided to come to earth into a human body to go through amnesia, to descend, to forget who he or she actually is in their soul, to get confused, to misunderstand. And then once one goes through somewhat of awakening in the sense that they start to question things that begins the search the search for the truth the search for the answers once one is engaged in the search once one takes in in these rituals or the initiations then one can start to ascend and one starts to ascend because one reaches the ultimate liberation that one is not someone a person is not their body who you are as a person is your ego which is not who you are as a soul. And in that understanding, we have the ego death. We do go through dark nights of the soul because we've been confused for so long. But then we start to see liberation. Of course, in this mystery school, as well as most of the ancient cultures, we see heavily the concept of reincarnation, which I absolutely believe in. Most of the people I know believe in reincarnation. You see, you see Yahshua teaching reincarnation in the Missy books of the Bible. You also see mentions of reincarnation in the canonized Bible as well. This is very much a, a very, very deep concept that's spoken about and basically understood to be fact by most cultures on this earth. And why is this? Well, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transmuted. So when a person dies, there really can be no destruction. There really is no death because the soul itself cannot die. And so the soul itself has to transmute itself into another body, another thing, whatever whatever you're, you're supposed to go to next on your journey of understanding who you are in the greater whole. Something interesting I found about mentioning the U U Ulyssian mysteries regarding reincarnation is that you're taught through this that you're not living to die, but rather you're dying to live. And of course, once there's that liberation, once that fear of death is gone, you're limitless. The Ulyssian mysteries are also thought to have come from Egypt. And this was in a lot of the research I did, which I totally understand. Even though we're looking at Greek characters, a lot of these Greek characters do come originally from Egyptian characters. As I said, Hermes is actually Thoth, the writer of the Emerald Tablets, right? So we're seeing basically just a metamorphosis of these stories that were taught in Egypt as well. And of course, we know that the Egyptian culture was the offshoot of Atlantis. Again, we are the Atlanteans. So that was interesting to me. Now, the Ulyssian mysteries had to go underground 
in the fourth century because of the Christian emperor Theodosius. And this happened in 392 CE. And I thought it was interesting. I'm going to put a clip from a Joe Rogan interview where somebody speaks about this. And they talked about the black robed Christians coming in to destroy these mystery schools. Well, again, a lot of these old belief systems, even though you do have priestesses, you do have people who are responsible for taking care of the rituals. And there definitely is quite a degree of, of initiation and, and going through the discipline of initiation in these schools. Everything about these schools is about the individual experience. Again, that's what we see in yoga. That's what we see in a lot of these martial arts. Even though you have your teacher, you have the parm guru, you have the dojo, you have the sensei, all these different teachers, it's really about the individual experience. I know as a teacher myself who's been authorized to share this philosophy, I can only teach you the philosophy. I cannot help you experience it. That is something you have to do on your own. And when you know that, and when leaders know that, there's less control, right? But there's also a lot of respect to the process, that there is a process here. And so, um, it's, it's more of an ink, even tango. And this is also the same thing that Jesus or Yahshua taught as well. I mean, if we look through the Bible and through the missing gospels, Yahshua was not a fan of church, of temple. In fact, he was very much against these organizations, which is actually pretty sad because, you know, Yahshua basically came here to say, hey, yo, brah. You don't need the rabbi to get you into heaven. Like that's already inside of you. It, it's be, there's no middleman. There's no middleman between you and God. You are the conduit of God. Anybody teaching you, of, they called Yeshua rabbi, which was teacher, just a teacher. And he was very clear that all he can do is teach you the mysteries. You are the one that have to live them, understand them, be them. But what happened after Yahshua passed away, which I don't believe he was crucified, but again, that's a story, different story for a different day, was that they created a whole religion around him. And so here was this teacher that was telling you that you are the one responsible for your own salvation. He was telling you this, and now this whole religion is based off of him and something he didn't teach. So the controllers created a religion around him, making him the pinnacle, the, the person who decides where your soul goes, which that wasn't what he said at all. You are the one responsible for the growth of your soul. Now, why is this important? Why do I bring up Yahshua? Well, yes, because Yahshua basically taught the same things that the Ulyssian Mystery Schools taught, but because of Yahshua's wife. Now, once again, the Jewish prophecy said there would be two of them, not one. Two, the Christians wouldn't change the prophecy to, to fit their narrative, but there was two of them a woman and a man, Magdalene and Yahshua. She was the female Christ. Magdalene, we know she was part of the priestesshood of Isis, as was Alma Mari, Yahshua's mother, otherwise known derogatory. Her derogatory name is Mary, as is Magdalene's derogatory name. Magdalene's name is Magdalene, not Mary Magdalene. Alma Mari was also a priestess in the priestesshood of Isis. And one wasn't a priestess and the priestesshood of Isis without also being a priestess in the Ulyssian Mysteries. So the Ulyssian Mysteries were very much a part of the original Christian teaching. However, it was the quote-unquote Christian emperors who destroyed such teachings in their black robes. Why do I bring up black robes? Well, it's interesting because the guest on Joe Rogan's podcast also brought up black robes. We know that preachers and priests to this day still wear black robes, as do the bankers, as do the judges. And ever wondered why they all wear black robes? Because they're sworn into the cult of Satan. And I've said before, the official Christian religion ain't nothing but Satanism with a bow on it. This beautiful mystery school that mirrored the teachings of Yahshua, the teachings of the East, that gave each individual the power to save him or herself through hard work, through discipline. This beautiful faith that inspired the arts, 
theater, the concept of a republic where different areas could self-govern were destroyed by the cult of Satan. They took the power away from you and put it in the hands of the church and in the hands of Jesus. I believe they changed his name to Jesus to try to escape karma for themselves because his name was Yahshua. Now it's beautiful because this whole concept is coming back. We're learning more and more about the mystery schools today. And there are still still flavors of this around, as I've said, in the yoga shalas, in the martial art dojos, in the dieta ceremonies. And it's interesting, Joe Rogan made a comment with this guy that I, I'm going to paraphrase that I thought was really fascinating. People who are not involved in any sort of, of practice like yoga or the martial arts tend to always seem to be a little bit lost. But people who seem to be heavily involved with martial arts or yoga or do ceremonies like dieta don't seem lost. They seem to have a deeper understanding of the path that they're on. This doesn't mean that they have all the answers. And I, that struck me when I, I got chill bumps when I heard him say that because he's right. He's right. Before I found the practice of yoga, I was lost. I was raised as a Presbyterian to believe that my salvation was in the hands of someone else and totally out of my control. But when I found yoga and I started to study the philosophy set forth by Patanjali, and that's also the same philosophy of the Ulyssian Mysteries, after the deconstruction of my programming, I felt liberated. I understood that karma is merely my work and that nothing that the world tells you matters matters because it's not permanent and because it's not permanent it's not real but what is real is that i and you will live again always living never dying it's just the body that needs to be changed but you are eternal the only things that are true are eternal and how beautiful is that because if you knew that you weren't going to hell if you knew deep down that you were a fractal of god that the holy spirit the shekinah was always with you and that death was nothing but a transformation into a new life. If you really knew that deep down, no one would ever be able to control you. At that point, you would become liberated. And of course, the satanic church can't have that. All right, you guys, thank you so much for sitting through this. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Of course, we are going to be looking at other mystery schools building up to the priestesshood of Isis and their mysteries. I am going to be covering deeper Ishtar and Tammuz, which is another concept of these mystery schools, the, the descent into your own personal hell, the, the underworld of yourself, your shadow side, right? To only then be resurrected again into the light that was always with you to begin with. And so I'm super excited. If there is a mystery school, another mystery, ancient mystery school that you want me to cover, leave it down in the comment section below and I will be glad to look into it. I'm so, so, so excited to be exploring this with you guys. And spirituality, I love history. I love the cool stories of history, but spirituality has to be my utmost favorite thing. I know for a fact that I have been in these mystery schools in the past. This is very much familiar to me. And so I'm excited to be exploring them again with you all in this life. Have a wonderful Friday. The best is yet to come. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye.